So these are some new batteries from lead time and we're going to tear them apart. But first, let's talk about these Black Friday sales because I don't think most of them are that good. A lot of these lead times are listed for a really high price and they say, oh, it's 50% off. And the new sale price is literally more than a watt cycle for its capacity. Same is true with the Wheeze batteries. Those things are expensive now. And a lot of these lead times do not have low temp charging protection, but the watt cycle has it and it's cheaper. Also, the EG4 server rack 12 volt battery is almost double the price of a watt cycle battery. It's $324 every 100 amp hours at 12 volts. And the best deal I could find for a lead time is their 12 volt 280 amp hour for $500, which does have low temp charging protection, but watt cycle you get 300 amp hour mini for the same price. And Watt Cycle says 17% off, but all these other companies are saying 60, 80, 90% off. And the original price that they list is ridiculous. Like lead time 12 volt 280 amp hour, they said before Black Friday, it's $1,014? They're saying that you save 51% off? That's just so silly. So be careful when you look at these Black Friday deals because most of them aren't a deal at all. Now these batteries just got released. This is a 140 amp hour Group 31 with low temp charging protection. And then this one is a self-heating 100 amp hour. They said this one's supposed to be very popular from their market research, but I really don't think at this price and with this feature set, it's gonna be doing that well, in my opinion. But we can see what they've changed inside, see if there's anything new. Now in my capacity test, this one only pulled 103, and this one did 145, so nothing that special. Now some 12 volt batteries, the overcurrent protection does not work. But lately I've been testing every single one I can with my large resistor bank. And this thing is fully charged. Let's switch it on. Almost 300 amps and it shut down. So it passed the test. It actually has overcurrent protection. Now test number two, 500 amps. That's pretty good and it turned off. That was a few seconds. So the overcurrent protection actually works. Now typically I use these types of masks and some safety glasses, but I finally got one of these. Now, a few weeks ago I had cellulitis next to my eye, and I'm pretty sure it's because when I was working with concrete, I was wearing regular safety glasses. So now when I cut into things, anything that has dust, I use something that's sealed around my face or around my eyes. And this one is the best of both worlds because it also filters the air. So yeah, check these things out. These are fantastic. And it's very comfortable. And it's great for the end of the world. I wonder if these are rated for nuclear fallout. Now there's a temperature sensor for the BMS and only one for the cells. It's mounted right here and the heater pad is right here. They should have the sensor closer to the center. And for heated batteries, they should probably have multiple temperature sensors. Now, usually with these heater pad batteries, these are not triggered that often, especially if they're indoors. And it increases the complexity and the price. So in my opinion, I'm not a big fan of these heated batteries. Also, you cannot put them into series for 48 volts because one battery will always be triggered first and then the heat pads will discharge that one battery and it will create an imbalance in the stream. Also, they're still using solder. It reached the proper temperature, but I prefer when they're like this, just like most of the other BMSs now. These are done right, so there's no issue here. Now, this is different. This is a 60 degree Celsius switch, and it's on the cells. This is never gonna get triggered. Also, the balance lead isn't very protected here. Now, let's look at the other battery. Now, the overpressure relief valves actually have holes in the foam. A lot of batteries don't seem to have this nowadays. Now the build quality is pretty much the same and they really want you to know that they make these in house. Now this one is rated for 150 amps. So you have an extra supply conductor. Now on the other battery, this was held down with a piece of tape, but these wires are just floating out in the open. It shouldn't hurt performance, but a lot of the competition now has a very protected balance cable. The most important thing is if they glue it in place, because sometimes these pop out during shipping and your battery will be dead on arrival if it does. That's pretty uncommon with these lead times. Now let's compare them to a watt cycle battery, which is cheaper. First, the balance cable is protected. 
Next, instead of solder, we have screw on terminals. Now on lead time batteries, we have foam and tape in these straps. But on this one, we actually have metal cell holders. Also, they glue the main terminals. And everything else is the same build quality, very similar performance as well. Now on the EcoFlow, this is not as cheap as a watt cycle, but the price for the surge capacity, if you're trying to run a trolling motor battery or large inductive loads, this one works great. Also, they're not using foam and tape and glue. We're using actual plastic cell holders. And this one is cheaper than the lead times. And they might even have a cheaper Black Friday price. I didn't even check it out. Also, no globs of solder. We have screw on terminals. Now, lead time has been around for quite a while now making these batteries, but the EcoFlow 12 volt just came out. I haven't heard any complaints on it yet, but we don't have a long term track record. We have a long term track record for these components over here. So that's a downside of the EcoFlow. Flow. But Watt Cycle has been around for quite a while, and some of my members have been using these for a long time, and they're the cheapest out of all of them. And the build quality is really good. So yeah, the competition is absolutely stepping up now. Now I thought the EcoFlow would sell like crazy, but the Watt Cycle actually sells a lot more. The one lead time that I do like that's going to be on sale is the trolling motor battery. It has a massive BMS, a fantastic surge capacity, and for the price, it's competitive with the new EcoFlow for trolling motor application. Now personally, I do not like 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries. I think for a system, you should get the largest one you can so you can save on wiring cost. Just imagine how many 4 aught gauge cables you have to cut to wire up three of these 100 amp hour batteries. You're better off just buying a 300 amp hour battery. Now lead time and watt cycle have really good large batteries, but EcoFlow does not. This is the largest 12 volt battery they have. They really need to come out with a 280 or a 300 amp hour. And that's pretty much it for this video. Be careful of Black Friday sales though. A lot of them say it's 50% off and then the deal is not that great. So please look at the prices that you're paying and compare them to other batteries on the market. Don't just blindly click and buy whatever you see. Also, if you think I'm missing a battery for my budget battery videos, please let me know down below. I will review anything. And that's pretty much it for this video. So I will see you in the next one and thank you so much for watching. Bye.